What's up everybody? Back at it again with another video. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be looking at uh, how to do just a few different types of doors and uh, maybe you'll come up with something different on your own. That'd be pretty cool. So, what we got first is your standard with a little bit of improvement. It's a uh, interact toggle door that then plays an animation. So the first animation that's going to play when, once we click this handle is the handle is going to turn and then the door is going to open. We're going to go on the other side because it's going to hit us in the face. And then on click again, shuts it. Next up, we have this fantastic example of a hinge door, which if you have a collision on your character, which this one does not, it will work um, based on physics. So you reach your hand out and touch the door and it'll open. For people who don't have that, um, I have a cube here so we can see how it would work, which is collision based. Because it's colliding with the cube. Now if we switch into an avatar that for sure has collision, because I enabled it, and the on VR, so I can't use my hands, which would make this much smoother, but if I just kind of walk into it, we can see that it's colliding and moving when it collides, and it has a fixed area where it'll move on based on this hinge right here. Next up, we have our trigger area door that plays an animation once this, there's a trigger on this map and one on the other side. Once these are triggered and animation is played, to move the door. This is actually a repeat of the hinge, didn't mean to put this one here. All right, everybody's favorite. We have a rotating door uh, that works on an animation trigger area very similar to that one up there but it's it, um, slightly, just slightly different so you can see it moves the whole thing and if you actually stop moving your character it'll move your character and then as soon as you resume moving it'll teleport back into your character's point of view and last but not least, we have a hinge joint based rotating door. So again, we have a cube there that would work if you didn't have collision on your character. Oh, well, we're stuck that way, we're here this way. And you can see it works pretty much as intended. Um, the one issue with this one is you probably wanna make the your uh, centerpiece here um, smaller because the issue happens when you start moving a something with a hinge joint is it actually can't move so your force moves pretty much your character and sometimes you'll spaz out if you start hitting that so but if you hit the other parts of it, it works fine it just only happens when you clip the center also, if you were using VR and had your hands out, this would be a lot smoother as well. Because when you're doing it like this, part of your character is actually glitching through it, which causes it sometimes to think you're pushing the opposite direction you are and force it to kind of bug you out, maybe yeet you across the map, which can happen. So, while this is the coolest, it is also probably the buggiest. It kind of just yeeted me a few feet there. Um, yeah, slower and VR friendly. It works really good on VR. Um, but yeah, Quest users and PC only people will have a difficult time with this one. Let me see if I can get back over here. Again, you can always include something like a cube, which again, this would be acting like your hand would be reaching out in front of your main body of your character and it works a lot better.
Well, all right, let's pop out and see a brief overview of each of these doors. All right, so this one um, involves animations which I've covered, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail on animations and an animator, as well as an Udon behavior. Let's see here, where is our Udon behavior? Ah, okay. So how we have this. You can't have an animator and an Udon behavior on the same object, it doesn't work. So what we did was we copied our knob got rid of the mesh rendering, added a collider, and put on an Udon script behavior. Now, this one is a little complicated. Let's break it down and see what it does here. Basically what we're doing is we're gonna say on interact. These are our two public variables, door and knob. You can see that they're public. We are gonna say, we're gonna put a block here. So basically it says interact, this block, it sends commands to multiple things. It's just a uh, splitter, so to speak. And so we have our first animator. We have an animator get pool and an animator set pool. We're gonna use our standard is open string for both of those. Basically what that says is, hey, trigger the door open if it's open and shut it if it's shut. Our two animations that we have. And we're gonna do the same thing here with the knob. So it's gonna trigger both these animations. And the way it works is it sends, it's gonna send the first, this first block string command. So it's gonna do the knob and then it's gonna do the door. That's how that works. And you can see we have our animator is open value. It's going to do knob movement, seeing the same for door. Not when knob movement is open is true. It'll play the knob movement, or when is open is true, we'll play the knob movement animation. And when it's false, it'll go back to knob, which is our idle. So, that is how that one works. We have an animator, a knob. That's pretty much all you need. And an udon behavior, right. Next up is our hinge joint. This one is pretty complicated. So we'll take a look at everything. It is pretty standard. There is no animators, there is no udon behaviors. There is only the hinge joint. So essentially what you have here is you assign a hinge joint to a door or any object really. We're gonna do it to our door and you need to position the anchor how you want it and the anchor is essentially the point of rotation and then once you set that where you want it because it's totally up to you mine is right here you can see it right here you can hit edit and joint settings to change that i hit uh, use limits to limit how far it can rotate which is what stops it And then essentially you can change the um, mass and drag to give simulate weight and resistance. If you want it to move slower, you have to push a little harder, that type of thing. Um, that is pretty much how that one's done. The actual figuring this out was actually a lot harder than describing it. And this hinge joint here can be very hard to set up. Um, you can do some interesting things with it, uh, like if you set it slightly tilted, it'll wobble, because gravity, if you have gravity enabled, it'll set the door to like a, a bar, bar door wobble, or a kitchen door wobble, pretty interesting. And again, if you want to have an option here for somebody who doesn't have collision enabled to use your object, make sure you just have a cube, give it a, a collider and a pickup script. And whenever that hits that, it'll work. All right, 
here we have our animated trigger area, which is essentially, uh, we can see we have our door, which has an animator, and we have our mats. Uh, these mats have an udon behavior and assigned to the animator on that. And here's what they look like. I'll zoom in a little bit. We have an animator object public, which we can see here. And we have our on player trigger enter, which pretty much says, hey, when somebody enters the trigger area, get the state of the animator and inverse it, play it. So if it's not playing, well, it says, hey, is this Boolean false, which it is, set it to true. And this one says, when a player exits, do the same thing. If it's true, set it to false. Give you a zoom in, make sure you can see all these. Okay, then we have our state machine, which is just two states. You have the idle and the movement. If it opens true, do the movement. If it's not, go to idle. That's our other hinge door. And now finally, we have one of our crazy rotating doors. So this is the animated one. Uh, essentially how this works is you have your pillar with four child objects. Sorry, here, four child objects. And the anim and the pillar or the center has the animator attached. So whenever this moves, the child objects will move the same. And essentially what we do here is, I'll show you how to do this one, is we go to our movement, rotation, and at five seconds in, it does a 180 degree turn. Negative 180, 180. So as soon as somebody enters that trigger area, and we'll take a look at that script. Oh yeah, we have a cube here, that's invisible. And it's a, it just triggers true. And we have a script. So we have an on player trigger enter, set the bool. Here's the target, public, and on player trigger exit. On the exit, we set it to false. That's just, it's always gonna be false, it's never gonna be true. That's just how we do that one. And then we have our hinge joint based rotating door. So, how do we do this one? Same thing, rotating door, four child objects. We have a hinge joint. Hinge joint is configured like so. The limits are, it can go, what is that, four, six, six full rotations, something like that, six full rotations, uh, before it resets, and you can set that however you'd like. Uh, yeah. That's pretty much how that one's set up. Nothing else too crazy about that one. If you have any questions on this, uh, you know, let me know. If you're able to get some of these working and implement in your world, leave me a like, comment, or subscribe, something like that below. Uh, if you are looking for a download file, uh, these are available on various tiers on my Patreon. Just drag and drop right here, see what you get. It'll work exactly as demonstrated because it's the exact opposite uh, exact object Blech. also they will come with the materials and shaders and all that stuff and the scripts already attached so you don't need to have, you don't have to worry about configuring anything if you don't want to but that's all for this video guys see you next time